Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Laurence and I post art videos. I aim for once a week, but you know, sometimes life happens. But today I thought that I could do a quick video, we'll see if it's quick or not, all about how I use my watercolor pencils. I did an apology video a while back in which I apologized to my watercolor pencils because I totally changed my mind about them. At first I really did not like them and I had to apologize because I was wrong. They're amazing. <laughs> but since then I've used them a lot and I've used other mediums as well and I've had some questions from time to time come up about how do I use my watercolor pencils? Because for some people it's hard to imagine how to include them in your workflow. So I thought that today I could do a video in which I try to split my workflow into different smaller steps. I say try to because for me watercolor pencils in the end becomes just like almost like intuitive painting. So sometimes it's hard to identify specific steps but we'll do our best. So first I'm going to show you what materials we're going to use, but any watercolor pencils are fine. So I have this kit for Derwent. It contains 24 colors. And I also have a bunch of colors here that I bought separately. I have the brand Faber-Castell and Caran d'Ache, and I have some more of Derwent. Step one. What I like to do is start from a background such as this one. So what I do is when I paint with watercolors and I have some paint left in my palette, let's say in a palette like this, I have some leftover paint and I really don't want to waste it. Then I'm just going to paint a background. I'm going to practice doing an abstract painting in an intuitive way. So I don't really think about it too much. I just put the paint on paper and I let it dry. This is a good start. I feel like for me, having a background already painted kind of takes away the fear of the blank page. You know, the paralysis that you can feel when you're, you're starting from nothing. So at least there's already something on paper. And when I have a couple of these, they all have a different color palette. So sometimes I can mix and match them with my reference pictures. I can choose a background that's going to fit better with a certain picture. It's just a lot of fun. So it's a good start. Then you need to have a reference picture. So I have one. This is a picture that I took while on vacation in Curaçao. So you can see here, we're a bit higher up and we see in a kind of a valley, it goes down and there's some water here. So a different type of texture. And then it goes back up. There's a little stair there. And there's the final layer, the little hills in the background, which I'm planning on exaggerating. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. So I am going to put this picture where I can see it. So the first thing when it comes to drawing with watercolor pencils that I like to do at least is that I start with that partial sketch. So I sketch, but I focus on values. So what I feel like doing right now, when you look at this picture, you see that there's a lot of shaded areas. So I'm going to start with that. So I pick a color that is going to be most likely my darkest color in this image. And I really want to use this pencil. I like using unnatural colors. So I feel like using blue violet from Faber-Castell. So what I'm going to do is I'm first going to sketch the darkest areas and we're going to go quickly about it. I don't need anything to be precise. This is not the way that I draw. So in this rock formation here, there is some areas that are a bit lighter. So I'm going to leave some spots for lighter shading, but some areas that are very dark. I can just sketch and fill. And here I'm also making sure that I leave enough space for the foreground. So I'm kind of using this step to set the limits in my image as well. So this is the foreground area with the big rock. 
and then we're gonna have the middle ground here that is a bit lower and then we're gonna go up again in the distance. This is kind of a tutorial, but not really at the same time. So you can, if you want, decide to paint the same image. As you saw, I put an image in the beginning. So if you want, you can just go back and take a screenshot of it and paint the same thing if you want. Or you can just take this as general steps that you can use yourself when you draw with your own watercolor pencils. So, you know, I'm not recreating the exact shade areas or stuff like that. I'm going a bit simpler and I'm not worrying too much about being exact. This is not a photorealistic drawing. And I feel like when you go quick like this, you often have a lot more movement and it feels more playful. It feels looser and for me this is something that I'm looking for. And also I feel like it's a really good exercise as an artist to focus on values. I have this first area right here and now I'm going to work on the foreground to identify where its limits are. The foreground kind of continues here, but I don't want to use this color because this is not a dark area, it's a lighter one. So I'm going to choose another color that's going to represent my lighter area. So I just want to maybe swatch a couple of colors. I want to make sure it fits well with this one. So I have the terracotta here that I think would be a good choice. Let me see. But it would be interesting to use a bit of water here just to see what it looks like when it's wet because oftentimes watercolor pencils change color when they're wet. That's such a nice color. Maybe the cinnamon one too. Cinnamon could be very nice. It's a bit paler and I feel like it could be pretty with that purple right here. I think I like the terracotta better, but, but I could use the both of them. We're just going to swatch that blue violet that we use because I remember that this one, once it's wet, it changes color and it's very impressive. It's very beautiful. Yeah, you see how vibrant it becomes? So I think we're gonna use a mix of terracotta and cinnamon. So what we can do is since we selected two new colors, then we can start using them in our drawing in areas where the lighter shades are. So it adds a bit more dimension and you can see that slowly we're building up our image like that. But I'm still going very fast. I don't really care about leaving some pencil marks or anything like that not at this stage at least and not ever I don't think so for me this what I'm doing right now is still it's still sketching but you you'll see that most of what I do is sketching I don't really get that much more refined so that's why it keeps this drawing process really fun and freeing and relaxing too. And what I do is I switch back and forth between all my different colors so when I get bored with one set of color, then I might switch back to another set. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue working on the general layout of this image. Because that's, that's so much fun. Now we have the water, so I'm just going to 
very lightly paint well draw the limits of the water and we're going to continue with our dark shades Another good thing about selecting these colors like that is that you kind of build your limited color palette, which is another good exercise. So I feel like this process here contains a couple of really good exercises, but it's nothing that you do too consciously. So I feel like it's a good way to train your brain without being obvious about it. It's like when you go dancing, you know, you, you have so much fun. And you don't necessarily realize that you're doing a workout because you trick yourself into doing it while having fun. At least that's how I see it because I don't really like going to the gym. I don't dislike it, but when I do sports while having fun, like playing a game or dancing, like I do it without noticing it. It's the best. So <laughs> this is something kind of similar. <laughs> With this workflow it's like you're training yourself to do some kind of artist exercises without really noticing it but it just kind of happens all by itself so i'm just continuing to work on the shades and light areas and soon i'm going to have a finished sketch so you kind of see how fast this is going. Now I'm just being a bit more careful because this is a staircase that I really want to represent. So I'm just making sure that I'm putting all my shade in the right areas and that I'm leaving some areas that are going to be a bit lighter. Making sure I don't draw over this staircase, in fact. And also like I don't mind if things are a bit crooked. I feel like it adds a little bit of interest. So now I'm just going to continue working on the background, focusing on the main areas of light and dark. <laughs> Sometimes I just lightly draw some areas so it allows me to have a bit more range. It's good, I feel like, to block in the main shades as quickly as you can. And then after you can just add more dimension, add more layers. But this is all an intuitive process. I don't follow specific steps, I just go with what I feel like doing. When I get tired of a color of a, or of an area, then I just switch to the next and I'm gonna come back to that area later. Nothing's really stressful. Okay, and since I decided that this is another color that we have in our image right now, so this lighter blue violet. Then it just makes sense that I draw this area in this shade as well, because it's the same, the same shade, it's the same value I mean. So we're going to do that. And everything is just gonna be more cohesive. So yeah, I don't take all of the decisions when I'm starting to draw. I just start with one thing, which today was starting with the darkest areas and then I go with the flow and then I continue building up. So this whole side of this rock is a bit in the shade, so I'm not going to use this lighter color too much. see a 
also how I'm holding my pencils. Like I'm not very precise. I'm holding them quite far sometimes from the end and it allows me to be looser. So yeah, I'm building up slowly some areas. You can see here that this is way more detailed than it was before. And it's it's nothing very conscious from my end. It just happens. And you'll see the watercolor part later because these are watercolor pencils and we're going to use them as such. It's just, it, we're not there yet. See that little staircase? It looks ridiculous and I love it. <laughs> like it makes no sense, but it's fine. So, so far we have a very limited color palette, which I really like. And I'm kind of debating if I'm gonna add another color in it or not. Because we still have this water to do. We'll see when we get there. We'll see what we decide. marks that are left behind when you add the water you have to stop seeing it as a bad thing instead try to see it as extra texture extra movement it's something that you can't get with regular watercolors so try to embrace it because i feel like it just depends on your mindset because it's a thing it's a thing that you're gonna get and if you see it as amazing it becomes amazing. So just try to see it in, on a good light and embrace it. Yeah, have fun with it. So now what I'm doing is I'm going to try to cover this last area as quick as I can. And this is a, like a bushy area. The colors are not that dark. The darkest values are mainly in this area right here. And what you can notice when you look at landscape pictures is that the stuff that is the farthest away is oftentimes lighter. So I know that there are a lot of trees there, so there's probably a lot of shadows there, but it's far away. So it's gonna be lighter than this part here for sure. That's why I'm not doing anything very dark. And it's also a good way to represent depth. You make sure that the things that are the farthest away are the lightest. So now I kind of have to make sure that this mountain here is a bit darker than this one in the background there. So it's going to allow me to separate all of these different elements.
Okay, now we arrived at a part where we need to make a decision. What to do with the water? For now, I'm not sure. So when I get to stuff like that, like what to do with the water, what to do with the sky, and I'm not sure, then sometimes what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in with the water. I'm going to work on these areas that I've already drawn. And then sometimes, well, most times, when I'm done with that, then I know what to do with the water. So that's what we're going to work on. We're going to add some water now. But first, I need some clean water because I have this dirty water that's not going to do. Okay, so I forgot to turn on my camera. <laughs> but what I did is I started to wet some areas. I started with the lighter parts here because I know that the cinnamon color gets even lighter when it's wet. So it kind of allows me to keep the sandy, the lightest areas very light. So I like to start with that. And then what I did is I moved on a little bit in the shaded areas. So it's always a lot of fun. And I always try, I try to preserve some of the areas where it's drawn. I like the look of having some of the areas painterly and some of the areas looking like it's drawn. So I like to have a mix of the both, but sometimes, I'm sorry if I can't speak while I'm painting, I know that what I'm saying makes, it's not the best way of phrasing stuff, but anyway, um, sometimes I get too excited, I like this part very much when I start to introduce the water, and sometimes I forget to preserve some of the drawn areas, but we're gonna try to do that today. What I'm doing right now is I'm wetting the areas that are the lightest and I'm alternating with some darker areas. I'm mixing colors too. Another thing that I did, especially in the shaded areas right there, is I tried to keep my brush on the drier side so the paint wouldn't flow everywhere. I really like the effect that it's doing in the mountains. So I think I'm going to try to preserve that last one. Well, these two furthest one, just like, I'm not gonna put any water on them. So I preserve the drawn look. And these ones that are a bit closer, I'm going to add some water and merging the colors together. It's so pretty. Okay, so I'm going to add some water in this area right now. But just a little bit, not everywhere, because I want to create some texture. So this is one thing that I really enjoy about using watercolor pencils is this part. When your sketch transformed into the painting, because you didn't know, but while you were working on your sketch, in fact, you were working on your final painting. You just didn't realize, you tricked your brain into taking it easy and like, this is just a sketch part, you can do whatever you want, there's no pressure, but then BAM, <laughs> it turns into the final painting. Okay, we're just gonna work on these little rocks there and I think we're gonna let it dry and see what we do next. Okay, I'm back. I took a little break. 
I watched a little YouTube video. I watched some TikToks. I posted a TikTok. If you want to follow me on TikTok, I don't post a lot. I kind of just post the same videos I post on my reels on Instagram. But on TikTok, I am Ploof. P-L-O-U-F-F-F-F-E. Four Fs. Same thing as my personal Instagram. But yeah, I post some art videos. I'm trying to post a bit more, but you know, it's, it's not picking up that much, but also I don't really post that much. Anyway, I watched some videos. I had a little think about what I was going to do. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my white. I use that a lot when it comes to lightening the sky because I still wanna see that beautiful texture, but I find that when I just draw with white on top, I get to lighten it a little bit while still being able to see it. Which allows me to separate the landscape from the sky because sometimes I feel like when I have this base layer, everything gets smushed on the same level. So I need kind of a, a layer of separation in the sky. So that's what drawing it with white allows me to do. And also like while we're at it, I might just lighten some areas in this drawing as well. Like this sand is supposed to be one of the lightest part of the whole drawing. So I'm just going to accentuate it a bit. Just like that, you know, here and there, having some fun, adding some dimension. But I noticed that this technique of lightening the sky with the color pencils, well, the, the watercolor pencil, only works on a certain type of paper. So if the paper is too textured, like a watercolor paper, it doesn't work as well. But on this paper, it works fine. This is a mixed media paper, so it's not as textured as watercolor paper. I added a, a layer of white on top of these two mountains up back there. I feel like it kind of blends the colors together a bit more. So we still have that drawing texture, but it, I, it feels a bit more blended, which I like. I added some like white lines and textures a bit all over like this. You know, going very quickly as we did the rest of this image really. So, you know, now we're here, we're almost done. To be honest, the only thing we need to figure out is what we're going to do with that water. And I think that I'm going to do some white areas along with some darker ones because we kind of see through the water. So there are some rocks that we can see like here, but I really want it to be evident that it's water still. So I'm going to be careful not to overdo it. So I'm kind of drawing the rocks that we can see on the bottom of the image. So now I just want to go and kind of draw the waves a little bit. I don't have a lot of experience with water and this white is not very bright. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. So there's a bit more white in this area. I think that this works here because we see a change in movement. There's different shapes that I haven't done anywhere else in this painting. So I feel like the fact that it breaks up the flow of the rest of the image, I feel like it really helps to show that there is water there, I think. But we'll see when it's finished because that's when we'll have the final idea. 
Water is always difficult for me to draw, but you know, I need practice and that's what I'm doing now. It's my first time drawing water like this with some wave and some foam so it's very very interesting when I'm finished with this I'm going to show you some drawings that I did using the same technique but you'll see some different types of water as well so it's very nice I think that we're done I might just add a bit of texture in these rocks here just to separate them a bit more from the water section. I'm very happy that I stick with these colors. I know I already said that, but this is so nice. Usually when I do this kind of technique, oftentimes I find myself using all of my colors because it's just where it, it goes naturally. But Today I got a very different result and a very interesting result. This is an improvement, or at least this is something different that I'm looking forward to explore more. So this is my current workflow, my most updated workflow using my watercolor pencils. As you can see, well, it didn't take me a lot of time. It was so much fun. And it's quite quick, so it's easy to do on your sketchbook when you don't really know what to do. You just want to sit down and paint a little bit or draw a little bit with no pressure. So this is an excellent workflow for that. I'm going to show you some close-ups. I also want to show you some of my previous drawings and paintings that I did using this technique. This type of technique that you have seen me use today, I use it with all of my watercolor crayons kind of so with my pencils my new color tools i have some other types of like pens or pencils that are not watercolor pencils but that are still water soluble so all of my material that turns out to be water soluble i kind of use the same way and oftentimes i'm going to do mixed media so i'm going to use some of my watercolor pencils along with my new color tools and whatnot so it's just gonna all merge together um, what what can i show you well you might have seen this one this is a painting that i did not too long ago i did a video about it so i use the same techniques but then i use a mix of watercolor pencils and my new color tools you can get some really nice textures when you mix the two together same thing here. Here I didn't use a lot of pencils, just a little bit. I mostly used some new color tools with a background of watercolor. Here I did the same techniques, same techniques here. You can see how different the water looks. So this is usually how I do my water. Um, here was the same technique, yes, but mostly using new color tools and a little bit of colored pencils on top. Same thing here. So you see, oh, this is another type of water. There was a little bit of foam, but not much. So yeah, it's different. Anyway, so that's it. I hope that it... It kind of answered some questions that you may have had and I hope that it made you want to use your watercolor pencils a lot more and that it made you want to experiment. So that's it for today. Don't hesitate to leave me any comments, any thoughts that you might have or any suggestions for future videos that you would like me to do. 
whatever just leave it in the comments below don't forget to like this video if you're still here please and thank you and subscribe if you're not already subscribed to my channel take care and i will see you soon bye